Hello, I'm Philip Stoughton. I'm here in Eureka Park, part of CES 2015, and I'm on the ZOA booth. And I'm joined by Kevin. Kevin, thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Great product. I spend a lot of time traveling, particularly in Asia. Air quality, a huge, huge issue there, but getting yes. more of an issue elsewhere. I live in London, I cycle, I run. So lots of challenges there. Tell me about the product and what sparked your innovation here. Right, so ZOA is a wearable environmental tracker. It detects your air quality, but it also detects things like your temperature, humidity, and sun exposure. And we take all of that data and we give you personal recommendations on how to live a healthier life. And we send all that information to your smartphone so you can get all, the, all that data right away. And then we crowdsource everything onto a public map. You can see everything on, on your community and city map and then you can do things about it. You can say here are some bad areas, here are some good areas. Maybe I'm going to go exercise in certain places. Mm. Or maybe we can do something about these bad areas and affect change. Okay, so that, that would be maybe used by a city council or, or an environmental organization in the area to lobby and get some change going on there. Right, or just some frustrated uh, community members yeah. who are having issues. Yeah. There's a lot of asthmatics or just in general people who are looking to live a healthier life. Yeah, and that whole, that whole crowd um, data, getting that data together is really important. One of the takeaways, one of my colleagues, a journalist, um, was talking about yesterday in his show wrap up was the need for innovation, one to have a use because a lot of, sometimes I look at the 3D printing world and I think, why do we need a chocolate monkey head? <laughs> yes. um, but this is a real use, but also it has to be social as well. It has to give value to community because we have the opportunity to do that. Do you think that's key to some of the innovations that are successful at the moment? Absolutely. I think that the social component is what draws people in to certain products. Yeah. Um, the thing about the environment is a lot of people want to make change, but they don't know how. Yeah. They might do something like purchase an eco product, but how can I make a real impact in my community or mm. my environment? And this is a great product that gets you engaged with improving and making change. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of products that will grasp that concept and that innovation and yeah. engage their uh, consumers will, yeah. will really do well. Yeah, I mean, it certainly works for me. I run in London, I run by the river because I think it's better. And it would be really interesting to find out if I got that right. And maybe I would definitely change my running patterns if I knew there was a better place to run. So so that's valuable. Tell me a bit about the, the company and where you are in terms of bringing this product to market. Right, so we're going to be launching pre-orders in April, and then we'll be shipping before the end of the year. Our company's been around for about a year and a half now, mm -hmm. and in the last six months, we've been sort of doing a sprint. Okay. Yeah. So sprint in terms of innovation, getting the product ready, supply chain. What are you doing in terms of manufacturing and supply chain? Where's it made, and how's it fulfilled? We'd love to continue making this product in Canada once we begin. Uh, the thing about manufacturing in small quantities to begin with is that you want to keep the quality yeah. as um, great as possible. Yeah. The thing about going overseas is that the communication yeah. and the time zone differences, it creates a lot of issues. So yeah. we want to definitely work out the kinks of the product mm. and then maybe in the future we'll look into moving somewhere else where it can be more affordable, but yeah. we would love to stick to North America yeah. for manufacturing. Yeah, and it's interesting because once you go beyond North America for, for sales, then the fulfillment's gonna gonna be required elsewhere as well, isn't it? What about what about other products? You got other things on the horizon that play in the environmental space or is it really very focused on this one product at the moment? We're definitely focused on this, but what we've noticed is a lot of people are requesting other types of air quality. So we detect particulate matter, the particles in the air. Mm. But a lot of people are asking about CO2, VOCs, and some of the other air quality metrics and other environmental metrics. So those are definitely things we would like to do in the future. Yeah, and you can build those onto your existing platform and get them in the same um, apps and the same communication. Exactly, and we have an indoor charging dock so you can leave it in your house and see what your indoor air quality is like. Okay. And a lot of people would love a Wi-Fi chip in that indoor charging dock along with some indoor air quality sensors so that they can know remotely what's happening in their house at any given time. Yeah, and then it connects into this whole world of smart home and internet of things. Everything seems to be connected. And my gut feeling is connect connectivity is a given now. It almost has to be, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. And we're looking at connecting with your air purifier, your ACE units, your uh, temperature in your house, and all those different things will yeah, eventually become connected. And not only will they control each other, but uh, 
they'll be able to give each other recommendations to help you live a better life. Okay, awesome. It's exactly what we need, living a better life. Kevin, thanks very much for your time. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you.